So I had to read this news two times in order to confirm that I'm reading correctly. And then I had to fact check it in order to make sure that no one is pulling my leg. But no, it's true. Uh, Ukrainian President uh, Vladimir Zelensky, who is a former actor, okay? This is what defines him. What defines is that he is a former actor, so now he can speak at the Oscars. Could you imagine if President Trump, while he was president, he would have gone to do some wrestling skit? Like, it's assumed that when you ascend to a public office, like Arnold Schwarzenegger became the governor of California, or when you have, in this case, Zelensky ascending to the position of president, you stop doing what you did before. I mean, like, imagine when California didn't have electricity and the governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, would take time off his hand in order to do a movie about him shaking the fence of a power plant and it's like, give the people back the power, yeah. Like, whatever. You know, when the first time I heard Amy Schumer making uh, the joke, well, actually, she wasn't joking, she was serious, that she wants Zelensky to host the Oscars, I was like, you know what? That is the best joke that she has ever made in her entire career. I don't think she can ever outdo that joke. But uh, we live in a very funny world, you know, apparently everything is political, so politics have become entertaining as fuck. Unfortunately, entertainment, which has become political, is boring as hell. I, I mean, I used to get bored when hearing politicians talk, and I would watch the movies to get entertainment, now it's the other way around. I, I watch movies and I get bored, and when I see politicians talk, I'm like, ha ha ha! You know, like Joe Biden in the United States going, it's like, there's going to be food shortages, and I'm like, ha! In America! <laughs> oh, did, did you do some policies there that led to this? Did, did you? Uh? <laughs> and you're telling this to people. You want some panic buying. Oh, now that is hilarious. You know, you kept the UFOs secret for decades. And now you're you're coming up and you're releasing info with the UFOs. But you're also telling people, yeah, you might, you might starve a little bit. You know, this is nation ruining shit. But anyway, right. So, the Oscars. My God. Um... There is so much to unpack about the Oscars. Uh, first of all, why do you think they want Zelensky so bad? I'll tell you why. If you think about that the actors are actually empathetic people and they care about... The, no. No, they don't. If you think the actors care about their fellow man, look how their politics and everything they ask for has happened in California nya, and has happened in the area where they live. And now... That there is massive unemployment and massive homelessness, they're leaving. They're not there to help their communities. They're not donating money to their own community. No, they're leaving. I I don't believe for a single second that actors are empathetic people. You know, they talk about the planet and Mother Gaia, and then they go to their hundred millions yachts. They uh, take their personal private jets. No, like all they care about is money. All right, they they care about money and they're acting, and it's like a brand that that wants. People to perceive them as if they care. So no, they don't care about Ukraine. I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. What I think they care about is money. And they know that the Oscars are failing in ratings. So this is just a shrewd maneuver. This is them monetizing warfare. Because I'm willing to bet for them, war is something that happens to other people somewhere else on television. Because I've seen a lot of them, you know, asking for a no-fly zone over Ukraine, asking for an escalation in the conflict for World War III. I don't know why they think they're going to survive it or why, why they think that it's not going to be the worst thing that humanity has ever witnessed if it were to happen. Like, I, I'm, I'm not saying that the conflict zone would expand over the United States, but such a conflict would cause... Supply shortages, it, it would cause famine, it would cause disease, it would like it, it would be the worst thing ever. And yes, disease, like how do you think the medicine is going to come in? I mean, most of it is made in China. <laughs> but these people don't think, right? So so when they say dumb shit like that, when they do that thing, it, it's almost because they're watching this like it's a reality TV show. Like they don't understand there is human suffering. And I'm telling you this from Eastern Europe. Like I can get in a car and within an hour I can be in the conflict zone. It's really that bad. And I'm looking at these rich Americans and my jaw is dropped. Like, I just can't believe it. It's like, oh, well, you know, we need we need to raise awareness. Motherfucker, awareness has been raised. Like, there is no way you can turn on the television channel or you can log in the internet without having your awareness raised. The awareness has been raised, all right? I, I, I don't know.
don't know what they're trying to do here, but like they're trying to raise their ratings. This is what they want to do. Right, so this is why they want to get Zelensky in order to raise your ratings. I am pretty sure, and I, and I can prove it. I can prove it. I am willing to bet that if they have this, like if they get the Zelensky to come on and have a speech, if you're going to take that speech and post it on YouTube, it's going to get an instant copyright claim because those rich fucks, they want their money. <laughs> so there's that, you know. Uh, but, but from the perspective of the viewer, the person that watches the Oscars, Man, I feel like I'm living in Gramsci's universe. Do you guys know about Anthony Gramsci? He was a Marxist. And he was very upset. He was upset that the Marxist revolution didn't go to the United Kingdom. Like, it caught up in Russia. Even in Germany, there were people who wanted it. But, like, in the United Kingdom, people didn't want to. So he was wondering why that is. And he thought that... Despite the fact that the workers in the UK were happy with their lives, they just didn't know how bad they were having. And the reason for this is that they would go out of the factory, they would be oppressed, the factory owner would abuse them, but then they would go home and they would spend time with family, they would unwind, uh, they would go to the pub and have a drink with friends, and this would rob the revolutionary spirit from them because now they have a time to relax. So what Anthony Gramsci said, let's take away their relaxation. Let's put their problems into entertainment. This is why everything has to be political. Because in Anthony Gramsci's worldview, if a worker was watching a football match, that was political because it was robbing his revolutionary spirit. It made him forget about the problems that he is experiencing. So you would have to get politics into the football match to remind the worker about the bad society that he lives in so that there is no more escape outlet so that people get so polarized and so angry at each other that the revolutionary spirit starts to commence and if you think about it for the last four years the television has done nothing besides terrorizing the population non-stop terror on on every channel everywhere you look and when I say the television, I mean it figuratively. I don't actually mean like the television because I know like some smart guys are like, hey, I don't have a television. I'm talking about when you go online and when you read the news or when you try to buy a video game and you get like a disclaimer from the company that they're supporting the current thing or whatever. And, and it's just been one current thing after another. Like it, it started with like, oh my God, Trump is bringing fascism. The world is ending. And then it was, oh my God, the uh, riots, right? Like people are, are finally waking up that they want their rights and, and the cities are burning. And then it's like, oh, the pandemic, we need to lock everything down. It's like, oh my God, the pandemic and the nonstop number of deaths, number of cases. And then it's like the mandates and you need, you need to, to get the vaccine because if you don't, you're a bad person and blah, 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 blah. And now it's with the war. Like how many conflicts are we going to get through? When is it going to just go back to normal? And the answer is probably never, because the media realizes that this is really great for ratings. Uh, companies are, are taking advantage of this so that they can virtue signal and get free advertisement. Politicians can capitalize on this and uh, ask people to vote for them. But like, how much can the average person take? There's no more outlet where you can unwind. I mean, you, you open the television, it's terror. You, you go to play a video game, it reminds you of the terror. You, you try to watch the Oscars, it reminds you of the thing. It's like, look, I knew people that were religious. Like, I, I knew people that were very religious. They, they would go to church every Sunday morning. They would fast. They, they would do prayer. But, like, if you took those people and you brought them to a religious extremist that talks about religion nonstop and nothing but religion, just nonstop religion, yappity yappity yap, gives you quotes from the Bible, like, even the religious people will find that person to be insufferable. Because, like, too much of a thing gets annoying. Like, people want to talk about something else. People want to do something else. People want to unwind every now and then. Even if they agree with the concept. Like, I, I agree, you know, by the way, I support Ukraine in case you didn't know. And it's not because of YouTube. It's because I'm Romanian. And the geopolitics situation is what it is. Like, I don't want Russia to neighbor Romania. Not that hard to understand. Simple as. Okay, I don't care about ideology. I don't care about anything else. Just like how Russia doesn't want NATO to neighbor it, Romanians don't want Russia to neighbor Romania. I know, very controversial, some people might disagree, whatever, I don't care, this is what I think. Period. Feel free to change my mind on Discord, if you think you have the arguments. But, with that said, with that out of the way, even I, who, who, who support this shit, 
I don't want it in my life 24 fucking 7. I mean, I, I probably did a lot more than some random people who just put a flag on their bio. You know, I actually went and I spoke with the refugees, I helped them out, gave them blankets, I did as much as I could. But like, I, I want some time off. I, I can't do this all the time, every time. Like, boom, 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 boom. And it's it's honestly like a lot of people go like, oh, V, why, why are you into VTubers? Why do you want me? Because they're the only ones that don't talk about this shit. It's come to this. It's just VTubers left. Uh, yeah, like, VTubers are going to get Zelensky, oh my fucking god, like, you're going to see the Anners or Iron Mouse getting Zelensky on their channel, isn't it? I mean, it's going to that. The way, the way things are going, Project Melody is probably going to have the Ukrainian president. I, uh, give her super chats. I, I don't know. It is what it is, but, um, I, I'm, I'm really curious, like, what is going to be the next thing? Because, uh, th this is something else that I noticed. If you read the, some of the Nazi intelligentsia, they were very brutal people. But they, they realized how to do propaganda properly, right? Because it shows how a party that no one knew before managed to, to take power. Like, it's an interesting journey. Like, how the fuck did they do it? You need to ask the question. And apparently, one of the things that they figured out is that fear and terror is a great unifier. Like, when you have... A problem. When, when something threatens the safety of the people, they unite. So they put aside their differences and they unite. But what they also figured out is that you need one terror at a time. Like if you have multiple problems, people get overwhelmed with the problems and they stop caring. So this is why like if you look at the television, that is the current thing. There, there is a the current things. No, it's the current thing. Because it's just it has to be one. And when one is over, they put another one. And they slip it and they put another and another. But like, always one at one time. And this is very interesting. Because again, I, I start to notice it. You know, the moment another thing rises, like the, the, the first one goes away. Like for example, the pandemic, right? Horrible. You need to stay indoors. You need to lock yourself in, right? Social distance and all that. And there is the uh, protests. Oh, you need to go out and protest. All of a sudden, the pandemic is gone. Like they don't even mention it. And then, after the protests are over and the correct uh, people win the elections, it's like, okay, now back inside, back to the pandemic. Just one thing at a time. Did you notice this? Isn't it interesting? Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.